What's going on, all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And join me today for your overview of the Hulk, Planet Hulk Omnibus, new printing from Marvel Comics. So let's go ahead and get started. Before going any further, I want to give a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on February 14th or 15th, depending on where you get your books. And speaking of direct market, that's exactly what we're looking at here. We're looking at the direct market cover. Throne, I love his artwork. Uh, he's a big European artist. He also did a huge run on cable. Now, you may be asking yourself, why am I using the file for the dust jacket for the standard edition? Because you know that I have my previous printing. That's because the spine has changed. As a matter of fact, on the direct market cover, they're using the spine that they previously used for, well, there was only one cover back then. So let's go ahead and do that comparison. So yes, this is still the standard edition cover that they're using, but the spine is different. Now you have that image of Hulk that you saw on the file. And the green planet has now been moved into the direct market. And I'm glad they did this. They put the creators up above it so you can see that image of the green planet. With all these little lights, what does that mean? So Hulk, Planet Hulk, there's your creators right there. Pak, Pakulayan, and Lopresti. And then the back of the book showcasing more Ladron images. A must read for Hulk and non-Hulk fans alike. For fans of epic sci-fi action, this book makes for a very fun ride. I completely agree with the first statement. That's one that I actually uh, ended up giving my brother was the Hulk Omnibus many years ago when it came out. Um, and he fell in love with it and he wanted to continue the story. So he ended up getting the World War Hulk. The most incredible Hulk story ever told. Here is a little bit of what this is about, including what the book's contents are. ISBN, it's a lot smaller now than it used to be. Rated Team Plus, but retail price $100, and the new printing is also $100. So let's go back to this right here in case people get the book and they're like, oh my gosh, it's a thin omnibus. Well, it's always been a thin omnibus. It wasn't really one of the biggest ones. So we're going to be doing a comparison on the internal pages here in a little bit. But the first thing I want to do is also look underneath these dust jackets. With this amazing image of the Hulk. Oh, I love that image. That's one of my favorite images from this whole series. And it is the same image on the board on both of them. The original printing and the new printing. The new printing being a little darker than the original printing. And as I said, we're going to do an internal comparison here in a little while. But let's go ahead and crack this open. I'm going to give you the premise where this is supposed to be read in case you're reading Hulk in chronological order or you're getting Hulk in oversized hardcover format. Um, if you are doing that, then I'll do that at the very beginning before we look inside the book and I'll give you a warning about some minor spoilers for the premise as to what sends him up, what makes Planet Hulk, Planet Hulk. All right, let's go ahead and crack this open. We have some green and paper right there. Uh, so this book collects Fantastic Four 533 to 535, Incredible Hulk 88 to 105, Giant Size Hulk number one, What If Planet Hulk, that's just a one shot, and the Gladiator Guidebook, I'm so glad it's included in here, and material from New Avengers Illuminati number one and Amazing Fantasy number 15. The book has 656 pages. And again, retails for $100. So before we talk about the premise, as I promised, because uh, it will be just a little bit of spoiler, so if people want to jump ahead, you can do the comparison and the extras. Uh, so where this fits into the reading order of Hulk, this is immediately after Tempest Fugit. And that is a story when Peter David came back. Uh, he did that, and then that fo was followed up by the House of M crossover. That will be in the Hulk by... Peter David Omnibus Volume 5, if you have those. So the way that this Hulk book is read, like issues 88 to 105, that's really the Incredible Hulk Volume 2. So that's the new Omnibus that I announced, the John Byrne and Joe Casey Omnibus. So this is where it gets a little bit confusing because 
that Incredible Hulk by Peter David Omnibus Volume 5 it is kind of split. Some of it happens uh, before the John Byrne stuff and then some of it afterwards. So I don't know how people are going to keep I assume people are going to keep it, you know, with right after Volume 4. But just so you know, though, this immediately takes place after Peter David comes back on the book. And then it jumps to this particular book. If you want to go back and check out my Hulk reading order, it still stands true. It's a little outdated because we've had a lot more new books. But if you're keeping tabs on this particular era, it will now go the Hulk by John Byrne and Joe Casey omnibus. And then you'll get the uh, Dogs of War oversized hardcover. And then the Bruce Jones oversized hardcovers. But that didn't finish in oversized hardcover, so you can get the trade paperbacks. So there's no omnibus of that yet. And then that's where Tempest Fugit and House of M come in, which can be found in The Incredible Hulk by Peter David Omnibus Volume 5, or in trade paperbacks. Ta-da! Sorry, it's a little confusing, I know. Uh, but, you know, I just wanted to clarify it for people. All right, now, just in case, minor spoilers. Let's jump into this. Let's set up Planet Hulk. What the heck is going on? Why isn't Fantastic Four in here? What's that about? So the Fantastic Four part is written actually by J. Michael Straczynski, and it kind of makes me wish that he had stayed on the book a lot longer. This sets up really what the events are for the Illuminati and why they decide to shoot Hulk out in the space. So Hulk is, again, turning into a big rampaging monster because of this gamma bomb that goes off in Vegas. And the Fantastic Four members, well, some of them, are going to go and investigate, and there's a huge fight. Now, this fight is taking place in the desert for the most part, but then eventually it moves into the city where blocks of the city are destroyed. And the city is pretty inhabited, so what ends up happening is that a lot of buildings and a lot of lives are lost, and everybody is pointing fingers at the Hulk. Now, the, uh, Mr. Fantastic and uh, his wife are having issues with their kids and what the government wants to do. Like I said, I wish that that had continued um, into another JMS story that had lasted a lot longer. Now, that leads into this storyline. This is Incredible Hulk 88. So this isn't written by Greg Pak yet. As a matter of fact, this is written by Daniel Way. And it's got beautiful artwork. And it's just how Bruce Banner's trying to live alone, keeping away from everybody. It's a story we've seen before. And in comes Nick Fury with a mission. Hey, Bruce, I gotta send you out to space. I need you to do something. So that's practically what this is for the next few issues. He goes on a mission to space. Uh, there's a hardcover uh, collection right there. Um, they actually collect the cover for it. And this mission lasts for a few issues until the mission ends and he's tricked. Something's going on. He hears voices in this little tiny spaceship that took him to this little space station. It says, Bruce... We're so sorry, but you've left us with little choice. What does that mean? So in between issues, sometimes you have variant covers. So that's where some of them are, not all the way in the back. And then you have pages from the New Avengers Illuminati. This is the issue where they decide, all right, it's time to shoot Hulk off in the space. He's done enough damage. Let's meet. So this group of people in the Marvel Universe, you can see here for yourself who some of them are, Decide, we're going to put Bruce inside of a spaceship and shoot him off into space to go live on a planet. And there's a backup plan, but I'm not going to get into that because, well, that goes into spoiler territory. That's too much spoilers. But there is a backup plan in case it doesn't work out for the Hulk. So that's where this starts. Now, the most important thing to understand about this particular era is that Hulk, when he transforms into Bruce Banner, has always been a smart guy, right? During this era, when he's Hulk, he likes to stay Hulk because he has the Bruce Banner smarts in him. We're not talking about Professor Hulk. We're not talking about Joe Fixit. We're talking about a different time for the Hulk. So he is now going as smart Hulk. He's not dumb Hulk, gladiator fight. So if you're expecting the Th Hulk from Thor Ragnarok, you're going to be disappointed. As a matter of fact, if you're expecting Thor Ragnarok just because you know the premises, Hulk gets thrown into a planet where it's gladiator type. He's there for entertainment and he can't leave because he has these obedient discs and so does everybody around him. So he has to make friends with these people and there's a revolution. And you're like, oh my gosh, that's the plot to Thor Ragnarok. Yes, but the characters are nothing like that. 
Korg and Meek do appear in here, but they're nothing like their movie counterparts. There's really nothing funny about Korg. That was a decision made by the director. Ooh, I find funny from time to time. Not looking at you, Love and Thunder. So Hulk finds himself on this planet called Sakaar. And people keep calling him Hulku. And they keep calling him their savior. And it's all ruled by the Red King. And the Red King has his own guard. And like I said, they all have these little obedient discs so they can't leave. And there's different characters that he meets through here. But the more that he fights, the more he has in common with some of these characters. So he be believes in forming a friendship with them. Because he doesn't have a choice if they're to survive. So they form a war bound. Oh my gosh. And you feel like these characters have been part of the Marvel Universe forever. So I mentioned Meek and Korg. Because of course they are in the movies. Uh, but they're different here. But you also have the character of the uh, Eloi. Eloi uh, Kaifi. She's one of them. Hero M. Uh, Lavinsky, and then there's also a brood character, and then somebody else that joins. And yes, they make a pact to get out of this, and eventually they're kind of lured into this revolution. They're, they're, they don't have a place for them, and they keep thinking that Hulk is their savior, this revolution that's going up against the Red King. They keep calling Hulk Sakarsun, that's what they call him, not Scarson. Uh, Sakarsun, they keep calling him that, and he's like, I don't want any part of this, I'm just going to fight. At one point, he gets the choice to go back to Earth, and he's like, I don't want to, I'm not about that life anymore. I'm happy fighting. This is kind of everything I wanted. And it is so enthralling just to see how he acts with these brand new characters. Yes, there are some guest stars in here. And in the animated show, they did change one of the characters up. Uh, you know, and, and the races aren't new. To comics you know we've seen the brood we've seen corks people before uh but these characters are new and my gosh the way that greg pack makes like makes you feel for them you don't want anything bad to happen to these people you want the war bound to stay together you want them to just fight forever of course nothing lasts forever right so eventually something happens where ah uh, well i don't want to talk about that but there is a series called world war hulk and that's where this leads into something makes hulk snap something horrible happens to these pages i'm gonna say something right now just in case you know people can't read stories like this you can't read stories where kids are getting hurt this may not be for you because there's one particular scene here oh my gosh it will rip your heart out I, i'm serious it's it's a rough scene to to watch or or to read about rather and man there's a lot of powerful moments in here and one thing i forgot to mention is when planet hulk starts as carlo pacolayan doing most of the artwork and then aaron lepresti doing in some of the fill-in issues he does about four or five issues and then uh carlo pacolayan comes back and finishes out the planet hulk story there's love there's betrayal there's honor and there's trust and friendship oh man this it was such a good story and one that I said has been adapted into animation. But I would love to see this actually adapted into... Well, I guess they can't really adapt it into the MCU because they've done that already with Thor Ragnarok. And I did love Thor Ragnarok, but I would love to have a more serious, like, Planet Hulk story. Maybe, I don't know, maybe a, a TV show with uh, some changes, perhaps? Now, there have been follow-ups to this, like The Secret Wars... Planet Hulk, and there was a Planet Hulk What If, which I can't even really show because the stories in there ruin what happens here. So make sure to read this first and then read What If. I will say that much. Uh, let's look at a couple of the other things that are collected in here and then, of course, the back matter. So here we have Amazing Fantasy number 15, and this is more of an introduction of this character that's going to be a huge player in the next storyline, the World War Hulk, and that is Amadeus Cho, which you may or may not have heard of. Uh, we also have a reunion of the champions right here with a little bit of a flashback. This is the What If featuring Planet Hulk, just to kind of give you a, a little bit of taste of what that is right there. Just different stories, all centered around Planet Hulk. This is the Gladiator Guidebook. This is so good. I'm so glad they kept these in here. Uh, they talk about the solar system. They give you maps in here. I love when they give you maps. They talk about the Sakaar geography and, of course, some of the key players in here. So 
I love that they add the society, the emperor in here, the death's head units, and then the tech that they use, as well as the different races that you're going to be seeing in here. So, characters like that. Hey, Korg, who's a Cronin? I didn't even get to talk about Kyera the Old Strong, who is like the Red King's big lieutenant, who's all about destroying the Hulk and all of the revolution. She's an awesome character. So after the handbook here, we have some variant covers right here. This is uh, Michael Turner, which I believe is what they use for the red cover. See, you know, Michael Turner's artwork, they recolor from time to time because he passed away in 2008. Uh, but that was before he passed right there. It's a beautiful piece. And some black and white art, some sketches of the characters that you're going to be seeing through here. And this is from Giant Size Hulk number one. And letter pages right here. And then an afterword by Greg Pak. Man, this, this brings back memories and I hope that... Not only do we get a reprint of World War Hulk, but we also get future volumes just finishing out Greg Pak's run on Hulk. Love to see some incredible Hercules, too, in omnibus format. All right, let's look at the binding. All right, so we have 656 pages. This is what this particular printing looks like, and this one is printed at the iMac printer. And this is the one from the Donley printer. You can see the eye. As a matter of fact, here's the difference in the eye. So that does affect the way that the book lays over. So we're going to compare a couple of pages here and more than a couple here. Let's original printing, new printing. By the way, the original printing, when I first got it and when I started doing videos, was getting mistaken for the OHC, the uh, oversized hardcover. You see, this is a little bit darker. And the oversized hardcover doesn't collect those issues by Daniel Way. And it doesn't also collect the what if issue, I don't think so. That, that is something that I remember getting mistaken. So keep that in mind when you're looking for this. That there is an oversized hardcover collected. I thought that was dirty. It's just the way the book is. Uh, so here's the planet. Again, darker down here in the new printing than the original printing. A different shade of green for the original printing. That is really weird that they decided to make this a little bit lighter huh i wonder what led to that decision so let's talk about the covers and then some of the pages here so the way the book lays over again it's going to be a little bit different because different binding i mean they're both sewn binding but i'm saying that the binding you saw the eye how it looks a little bit different so it has a frame just like the original printing when it comes to the covers and then you have a textless cover with the issue number down here and it's a little darker than the original printing so the colors stand out a little more it's a little more vibrant on johnny's red right there let's look at some of the panels yeah and it looks like it's going to be throughout the whole book that this looks actually i kind of like this a little more this looks like it's a little more faded out of course this is probably i don't know it's kind of hard to tell and that may be due to the inks they're using or it might be due to the paper stock and speaking of paper this one up here from the Donnelly printer honestly feels just a little bit thicker than this printing right here. And for those of you that don't believe me, that I'm like, oh, this one feels just as thick. I, sometimes I give away my original printing and I keep the new printing and vice versa. Sometimes I give away the new printing for anybody that I've just randomly picked. Sometimes in the comment section, you don't know which version you're getting. You like the newer darker green all right but i guess since we're talking about paper stock let's find some white pages okay i love this issue by the way this is when they're all sitting around telling stories uh backup stories so i think it's michael avon oming that actually draws this so i picked this because of the whites right here and honestly <laughs> looks like the bleed through is about the same i I can maybe tell just a little bit more here than up here. Let me find it. Let me see if I can find another one. It looks about the same, honestly. You can see a little bit of bleed through here and here. I'm not a paper expert. And honestly, I don't want that title. It's just they they look the same. But as I mentioned, what isn't the same is the way the book 
will lay over because of the eye. So this is the new printing where you have to hold it down a little bit like that to get the ear over here. And you can tell there's an ear right there. You can tell it's just that part of the ear. I mean, you still have to hold it down to get the picture, but not as much as here. Let me see if I can find something in the middle. And looking about the middle of the book here, see this has more gutter loss than here. So you can see more of the artwork than you can here. Not really a spread page. I can't really show any towards the end because it would really spoil things. But I didn't want you to see this like when we talk about gutter loss. You have to hold it down like this to see the words, all of it. But then again, you have to do the same over here because the words are going into that gutter curve right there. So, same. But that's it. That, as they say, is... Actually, let's hold it like that. That... Oh, yes. Oh, man. What an awesome picture. What a great story. As they say, is that is what I meant to say. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first-time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. And of course, the comparison to the previous printing. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan on picking this up, if you have the oversized hardcover, if you have the trade paperbacks, if you've never read it. I'd love to know if you've never read it and you've only heard great things about this and you're going in completely blind. Love to know all those comments down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and Patreon. Amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.